I think the consistency thing is the sexy advice. You've got to be consistent. And I've given that in the past too, 100%. Because you do have to be. But yeah, it's a requirement, not a strategy. If the only thing that differentiates you from other people is your consistency, it doesn't necessarily suggest or mean that you're going to be more successful. Because if you're not improving, it doesn't really matter. Podcast Growth Nation, welcome back to another episode of Podcast Growth University, where we talk all things podcasting all the time. I hope you enjoyed last week's episode, episode number 124, where we talked all about podcasting with a specific mindset and why, unfortunately, podcasters with that mindset most likely won't win in the long run, and I do not want that to be you. Today, for episode number 125, a no BS chat about consistency. So I know I've talked about consistency often, and I don't know, I felt pulled to do this episode. Right now with NLU Group Coaching, we actually have a group of 10 podcasters. So everybody in our group coaching program is podcasters, and we redid the entire group coaching to make sure it was speaking to podcasters. And talking directly to podcasters has brought up a lot of ideas for me, and and I can see a lot of common mistakes and a lot of different things. And a lot has changed over the last few years. It's really easy to lose sight of how much has changed since 2020, 2021, 2022. We're at the end of 2024 right now. So a lot has changed over the last couple of years. A lot of people started podcasts during the pandemic and a lot of them aren't doing it anymore. And there's just a lot of, there's a lot of different things that are working now that weren't working back then, or there's a lot of things that are working now that weren't even possible back then. Things are just different. Things are different. And this is the type of episode that I wish I would have heard in the beginning of my journey. I'm going to start with this. This is the, if you take nothing else from this, this episode, I'll give you the goods right up front so you can leave, but don't leave because it'll hurt the consumption rate. Number one, consistency is not a strategy, it is a requirement. Gone are the days where you could just be consistent and things would work. Yes, if you're not consistent, it doesn't matter, right? It's, you're, it's not going to work, most likely unless you get very lucky. But now, it's not a strategy. Well, I'll just be more consistent than other people. Uh, there's a lot of people out there that are really consistent when they're creating content. They're really, really, really consistent. And it's built into their week, it's built into their day, they have their offices set up, it's a lower barrier to entry to have a studio now, right? I have a studio at home, I have everything I need, it's always set up, it's really low resistance for me to record a podcast episode. There's a lot of people out there talking about how to make money with podcasts, so now you can do it more sustainably, hopefully. So, consistency is obviously something that's super important, but it's not enough like it kind of used to be. I was going through a list of all the podcasts that I've been on. So as a business, we try to keep really good records of all the people that we've come in contact with. So all the people that I've coached, all the shows that I've been on, all the shows that Alan's been on, all the people that have joined our Facebook groups, live events, all that stuff. And I was going through, and occasionally I'll follow up with people, see how they're doing. Hey, long time no talk, what's new? How's the podcast going? How's the business going? How's the family? Whatever. And I realized very quickly that probably at least 30% of the podcasts that I have guested on are no longer doing episodes. They're just, they're not doing episodes. And many of them were 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 episodes in. So I think the common thought that they probably had was, I've been really consistent over the last two years, but nothing's happening. Consistency isn't enough. Consistency isn't enough if your messaging is off. Consistency isn't enough if your audio quality is bad, if your video quality isn't good and you're relying on that, if your guests aren't increasing, if your speaking capabilities aren't getting better, if your storytelling isn't improving. Consistency just isn't enough. I really want to do this episode because I don't ever want you to get to the place where you say, well, I'm doing it consistently, but things aren't working. That means you're not doing the right things consistently. That's all that really means. And this is why strategy is so important. And this is why so often I'm talking about strategy. A simple trick to get more aligned guests. That is pure strategy. Are you making this social media mistake? Strategy. Two different directions to take your podcast business. Strategy. I like giving strategy because I think 
one of the reasons people quit is because they think they've done it long enough and they haven't gotten the results they wanted. But there's a difference between doing it long enough and doing it right. I have been working out. I won't say bodybuilding because well, I'll explain that. But I've been working out since I was 16. I'm 35. So that's 19 years. That's a long time. I'm an old man. I'm becoming gray. I'm, I'm getting older. And shout out, And I'm not saying if you're older than me, you're old. I'm not saying that. But when I look back, that's a long time to be doing something. If you said, Kev, how long have you been exercising? I could give you that number. If you said, how long have you been exercising consistently and correctly? That number is different. This isn't what that many years of exercising gets you. This is what that many years of exercising incorrectly and then figuring out how to do it eventually gets you. That's the hard thing is, yeah, you might be doing it consistently, but you're not doing it consistently well necessarily. The first year I podcasted, I did it somewhat consistently, but I didn't do it consistently well. Now the goal is to do it as consistently as humanly possible at the highest quality. But that takes time. There is something about that. Yeah, maybe you've done it for a year, 52 reps. That's awesome. But have you improved? Have you noticeably, noticeably improved? Has your branding improved? Has your technology improved? Guests, all of that stuff. Understanding of who your audience is. Has that improved? I know I've done episodes like this on the past, but I just wish this is something that I learned sooner. I do not want this to dissuade you. Honestly, two thoughts. If podcasting isn't for you, I'm okay if this is the kick in the butt where you say, honestly, I don't really want to get better at this. Maybe I thought this was going to be easier than it actually is and this isn't for me. I'm okay with that as long as you are because I'd rather you leave under your own choice rather than end up in debt trying to do this thing realizing it's not for you. That's part one. Part two is... Yes, this is as much a survival game as anything else, but you have to survive and then eventually thrive. There's people out there that started it and they did a bunch of episodes and eventually it got to the place where they said, I'm not getting the results I want, but I've done this consistently. This must not be for me. I don't believe that's true. I believe that you just weren't necessarily doing the right things. Like You can go on a thousand dates and you can say, well, I've tried to go on dates consistently, but nothing's happened. If you show up without pants every time, it's probably not going to go very well. And you never know. It might go really well depending on the person sitting on the other side of the table. But you know, you get the point that I'm trying to make. The other thing that I really, really wish I understood, and I know I've, I've said this before, but I just want to reiterate. Building the thing does not suggest or guarantee that people will come to the thing. We have to be more creative than ever now when it comes to having a podcast. I just joined threads for Instagram recently and I'm looking at all the people that are talking about podcasting and so many people are saying, I want to start a podcast, but I don't know what to talk about. That right there is a potential issue. You're thinking the podcast is probably going to do more than it actually is. That's like saying, I want to start a business, but I don't know what I want to do. I'm not saying you can't do it, but it, it maybe it means you're not connected to what you're actually doing in the first place. You want the benefits of the thing, you just don't know how you want to do the thing yet. I never wanted to be a business owner. I never wanted to be an entrepreneur until I found podcasting. And I said, if I could do that for a living, that would be the best life ever of all time. I'm going to figure this out. I'm not saying it's wrong to do it the other way. But if you think that the podcast is going to be the thing that makes life easier, I do think that you're mistaken. If right now you're struggling and you're suffering and it's harder than you thought, this is not a you problem. This is just kind of the way it goes. And that's totally fine. So the reason I brought up the threads thing is I did a post on threads the other day and I said, this is probably a, an unpopular belief, but I don't believe that all businesses should have podcasts. And somebody commented back and said, why not? What businesses shouldn't have podcasts? And I said, businesses that have people that believe starting the podcast will be the thing that blows everything else up. It just doesn't really work that way. Unless you're already somebody who is super well-known, you have a big audience, yes, you should probably have a podcast. Different, right? Because you have resources. You can pay people to do stuff. It's different. But if you're a small business who's struggling and you think that, oh, you know what? 
it's because we don't have a podcast and everybody else does. No, no, that's not necessarily it. Just like marriages that are in trouble, having a child isn't necessarily the answer. Yeah, it, it might reinvigorate things for a while, but that's not the problem. The problem is deeper. It's not a podcast that's going to do it. It's some sort of business fundamentals that maybe you're not, you're not doing yet. So again, I don't want this to be a negative episode. I really, really don't. But I do want to deliver a heart-driven but no BS truth about consistency. Consistency is a requirement. It is not a strategy. It is not a differentiator really anymore. Yes, you can still be more consistent than other people. I don't know many podcasters who consistently podcast as much as I do. But that's not the only reason that we are where we are today. There's so many other things. There's strategies. There's awareness. There's work ethic. There's grit. There's so many things that are built into that. Is there anything else I wanted to talk about today? This, for me, was very much an off-the-cuff, I just want to express something that I think if I heard earlier on, it would have helped me. Right? That's really today's episode in a nutshell. Hey, Kevin. Kim here. Just wanted to send you a video to say thank you so much for your help on creating the Peaceful Productivity Podcast. You know, I couldn't have done it without you. I knew you'd be lots of great help with the technical aspects of getting the podcast going, but you went well above and beyond that. You helped me with the strategy and you gave me all kinds of really great support. You know, I think the key to success in business is a great attitude and you have that in spades. You really walk the walk. So thanks again. Take care. I'll talk to you soon. I would say this. If you're practicing something consistently, you should also be able to reflect and notice the difference. If you don't recognize any difference between where you are today and where you are or where you were a year ago, in terms of maybe your branding, everything about the podcast, your ability to ask questions, your ability to answer questions, all of that. If you don't recognize a difference, I would argue a gentle argument that your consistency is not constructive enough. If you look back six months and you say, oh my goodness, so much has changed, I'm willing to bet that you're constructively consistent. Alan and I had a talk the other day. We had a live event in March. So this episode's dropping a little bit after I release it, but about seven months ago, seven and a half months ago, we had a live event. That feels like it was years ago. I cannot even believe it was only seven months ago. So much has changed. Clients, team, growth, camera angles, lighting, the way we shoot the podcast, so much has changed. It's wild to think of. Goals accomplished, goals set, opportunities, wins, losses, struggles, all of that. There's so much that has changed. But that's because we're not just focused on consistency. We're focused on constructive consistency. It's different. It's different. So that's, yeah, that's my, that's my takeaway for today's episode. I don't want to dissuade you. I don't want to beat you up. I don't want you to feel bad. I don't. I really, really, really don't. But I do wish I knew this sooner. And the reason I didn't know this sooner is because by the time we were doing seven episodes a week, we had already worked so much on trying to get better as podcasters and business owners and speakers and communicators and all that stuff that we're, we've been doing the consistent quality type of improvement. Right? We're, we're, we're trying to do it constructively every single day, a little bit better, a little bit better, a little bit better. Even this episode's an opportunity for me to see what I can do when I'm just spitting off the cuff. And I don't have anything written down. I'm just trying to figure out what would I want to tell myself? What would I want to tell Kev two years ago, five years ago, seven years ago? at the beginning of this journey. So this even this is me trying to constructively be cons consistent in real time. And that never ends. It never gets to the point where you stop doing that. And it can't. Because when that happens, you stop growing. And when you stop growing, everything stops growing. Because at the end of the day, your podcast, your business, your relationships they're most likely not going to grow beyond what you're capable of. And if they do, they're not going to live there for very long because it's not sustainable to keep. So that is my rant, I guess, for today. 
consistency used to be something that could set you apart, but now I think as the barrier to entry goes down, I know a lot of shows out there that are doing five episodes a week. I know some other shows that are doing seven episodes a week. The difference is some of them are just doing one-minute episodes. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. That's consistent. But it might not get them the results that they want because they're not reiterating and evolving and being constructive with the way that they're doing consistency. We did this episode a while ago. I don't remember what episode it was. But we talked about sustainability, consistency, and improvement. Sustainability is being able to actually do something on a repeated basis in the beginning. Enough to get started, enough to get going. Consistency is then doing the thing as a habit. And then improvement is doing the thing consistently and is improving as you go. And then the whole cycle starts over again. So we'll use episode frequency as an example. Again, I don't suggest most people do more than three episodes a week. I don't, I don't really think you need to. But you do one episode a week and it's sustainable. I'm going to start there. I feel like that's something I can do. All right, cool. I did one episode a week consistently for 52 weeks. Awesome. I feel like I could improve a little bit. All right, this is what I'm going to do. I feel like it's sustainable for me to do two episodes a week. Awesome. I'm going to do that. And then you do two episodes a week for 52 weeks. You say, all right, it's time for me to improve again. Then you do three and you rinse and repeat that. But the ultimate goal is when you're doing one episode a week, that becomes sustainable. Then you do it consistently. You're focused on improving every episode. All right, today I'm going to try to do the intro without any notes. All right, today I'm going to try to do the guest bio without any notes. All right, today, instead of relying on my outro that has my calls to action, I'm going to do a live outro. I'm going to try my best and see what happens. That's improvement. And if it goes horribly horribly wrong, you just edit it and you try again next week. But every one of these is like a practice. And what are you preparing for? I guess you're preparing for the big game, but there isn't really one big game. There's a bunch of practices, there's a bunch of small games, there's a bunch of big games, and then eventually the big games seem like practice, and then... The huge games seem like big games, and it becomes this weird, wonky thing where you get a lot more opportunity. All right, I'm going to shut up now. Somehow I've stretched this into what's going to end up being 20 minutes, as it always is. But I hope you enjoyed this one, just because I think the consistency thing is the sexy advice. You've got to be consistent. And I've given that in the past, too, 100%. Because you do have to be. But yeah, it's a requirement, not a strategy. If the only thing that differentiates you from other people is your consistency, it doesn't necessarily suggest or mean that you're going to be more successful. Because if you're not improving, it doesn't really matter. McDonald's is a very consistent product, but it's consistently average. Now, I like McDonald's. I have nothing against it. But you know what you're going to get when you go there. They're not necessarily improving. It doesn't feel like they're improving where high-end restaurants are always improving. They're always trying to get better. They're always trying to learn about the audience, whatever. Maybe not the best analogy to end the episode. All right, if you are looking for a group of podcasters who are looking to grow, who are looking to scale, who are looking to monetize, who are essentially looking to get to the next level of their podcasting journey, make sure you join the private Facebook group, Podcast Growth Nation. We'll have the link below. And as always, if you feel stuck if you're struggling with your workflow, if you can't figure out who your target audience is, whatever it may be, click the link in the show notes for a free 30-minute podcast breakthrough session. I'm not going to sell you on anything. I genuinely just want to add value. We'll get on Zoom. I'll share screen. We'll make a whiteboard together. We'll take notes. I'll send that to you so you'll have that. And you can always respond to me through email for any questions that come up after that. I think as of today, I've done 409 or something like that, 409 or 419 podcast breakthrough sessions, and I've had the opportunity to learn a ton. So that's also a piece of it for me, is I get to learn about what people are struggling with, and then I can do episodes on those things. And yeah, so you're quite literally helping other people by chatting with me about what you may not know yet or what you may be struggling with. So both of those links will be in the show notes. Also, we'll have the links for a couple of the products or services we use, Buzzsprout and StreamYard. I know StreamYard's prices just went up, so maybe it's not sustainable if you're out there. But if you are looking for a host, a new host, uh, a host to start with, I think you get $10 if you use my code. I think I also get $10.
But I'll have the link below for both of the codes in case you are interested in that as well. As always, I hope... I hope you understand that consistency isn't enough and you are very, very focused on improvement. I hope that. I hope you don't hate me after this episode because I know maybe a little, it was a little bit, it was very heart driven, but also very no BS. And that was my intention in this episode. I hope you're having a strong Q4 and you're getting close to accomplishing your yearly goals. And I hope you're taking care of yourself. I know this can be a grind. I know doing it all is really hard. I hope you're taking care of yourself. You're getting enough sleep. You're pouring into yourself. You're doing what fulfills you. That is what I hope most for you this week. Keep on crushing it. Keep on podcasting. And I will talk to you all next week.